So welcome back. I'm gonna just take you through some of the more interesting settings I've found. So when you go to user settings, which is the main settings application for this, so Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, um, both of these can also be accessed from the AOSP settings, but the page has been modified so that they kind of fit in with these some um, e-reader settings, but not the AOSP settings. So as you can see, if I go to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth pages, and kind of and then take note of and and then now if i were to go to the aosp settings here and if i go to the wi-fi bluetooth pages here see it's the same thing so it, like they actually directly like modify like the activity files within the aosp settings and they just have the user settings point to that or why uh yeah i'm pretty sure that's what they did and then now uh, reading settings. Uh, this is the settings for the built-in reader application. Uh, so over here you could actually change like the tab zones. So by default it's this one here, but it's kind of split equally. Uh, similar to how Webtoon did it when it had it before it was deemed too glitchy and was later was put from later versions. Uh, but the one I have here is this um, uh. So the one that I have here is this one in the me uh in the middle here, uh which I believe is actually closer uh the cl uh, I picked this because it's the closest to the um so called easy reach on Kindle devices. However, I believe um Amazon actually patented that's like like touch regions and stuff, so they obviously can't use that. I think I think they patented, it, but I'm not sure. But anyways, so these are the five options you have for the tab zones within the built-in reader. <clears throat> Actually, uh, not only the built-in um, like book reader, but also the gallery application uses this. Then you also have the um, display refresh. So I've not tried the fast mode. I've only tried the regular mode, so I might actually do a, a video about these some um, settings later on. And then um, user settings. That's uh, this is where one, some of the more fun uh, settings are. So first off is um, you can actually change the path that it scans. So you can actually set it to be the root directory, but I rather just have it be the books folder. You. If they don't really provide a, dish, a way to like just select a different folder or something, but I'm fine with that. <clears throat> Next thing is that um, when you press the home button, you can actually choose where it takes you back to. So it is either the home, the books tab or the apps tab, but not the notes tab. And I'm very sure it's probably like a bug in the software where it's not letting you like just go back to the notes section. If you really wanted to use this something more like a remarkable, um, if you know what that is. So, and then next thing is the, is this, this is actually for the row of um, six icons on the home screen. And interestingly enough, it actually uses like the real icons of the application rather than like the built in like custom icons the UX has. So, um, so sort by most recent uh, is the default if I can actually show it to you here. So as you can see, it kind of shows you your most recently used applications, which are replicated on the top row here. And I will just go back in here, here. And then now we'll show you how, what I mean, what they mean. So you can actually change how, where the home button takes you. So you press, change it to bookshelf. And now if I press home, it takes you to the bookshelf. So we'll go back in here and by default, when you press it, you'll just take you to the main home screen, which basically has the built-in quotation widget. Um, this, which I believe shows you your usage uh, for the past week. And then um, a row of six applications. And then, um, two rows of the um, books you have uh, and you can open them in the built-in reader or you can actually tap and hold them and you can actually change the um, 
default application so if you want to maybe use ko reader instead or something you can actually um change it here however it would have been cool if they actually um um actually let you like basically add virtual books to the um book view here that probably like points to android shortcuts because it, although actually i think there's probably too niche of a feature and what i'm actually why i'm actually thinking of that is actually because i created a script in automate that i have not uploaded to automate community as of making this video but basically i uh, it lets me like basically jump to a specific twitter page and then it will actually um kind of um jump to the media tab so that's one I, what i picked from uh it's supposed to jump to the media tab, but the uh, my script is a bit broken. But never mind about that. I'll probably try to find a way to edit it out of the video if I am editing this. Okay, go back to here. Uh, user settings. So I'll just go back to the apps view because that's where I prefer to go back to by default. Now with the um, row of application icons on the home screen you want to change that to customize you can actually customize this but the problem is that you can't like just tap and hold and rearrange or remove icons so you when you tap an icon you actually have to like select it from here and once you select it are already there so you have to like shuffle them to different icons if you want to kind of sh shift them around or whatnot it's a little bit hard for me to explain and then now the backgrounds so as you can see you get a preview of your background here and i'm gonna just press the button here to actually switch it back to the default here so <clears throat> this is what the default screensaver looks like um Guri reader didn't change the default screensaver on dr unit either but now if i turn it back on so basically you actually go into your internal storage and then you actually put your pictures in a folder called wallpaper however what i found is that it actually simply like stretches the image to fill the whole screen so if you have images of like different resolutions and stuff um that is not like the native resolution of the display it will take longer to set the display and in some cases you will not even set the, the, the background at all so I realized that you have to actually convert them to actually feed the actual display. Then it will actually like take less time to actually set the screensaver. So I actually have eight pictures here. All of these pictures are from um, uh, Linux top pictures, which uh, you actually won't be able to an an understand anything on the site if you aren't familiar with how Linux works. But anyways, I will just uh, go back to the one I've been using. So when you tap, it immediately sets. It doesn't give you a preview or anything except for this little preview window here. So that's that. And then uh, next is power management. So this is actually that um, third page in this setup, which is the last page. So you actually get set the sleep delay, automatic power off, and automatic um, Wi-Fi off. But in my case, I actually have the Wi-Fi disabled set to never because I primarily read online content on here. And I also use this um, somewhat frequently. I think I'm going to just set the automatic power off to 2 hours. Application Startup Manager. Uh, no, Application Startup Management. Now, this is actually very interesting because it, like, basically, like, just closes every third-party application after some time but sometimes you might actually have problems with them uh, like when you want to use them again and whatnot so what you can actually do here is um, set which applications you want to allow to start from boot and which ones you uh, want to allow to run in the background so in my case I actually have uh, Termux, APA, APK track and what else do I have um uh, rocker locker which is an application that you use to basically lock the um, functionality of the volume control so that it only controls the media volume instead of the um, ringer volume which is what it usually controls I have the ringer volume like I just have do not disturb always on because I don't really um, 
wanting to make much sounds especially when i'm using this in public so rocker locker i actually allow it to start from uh to um start at boot and i also allow it to run it background so that it can do its thing and then um xsdl i also have to allow it to run in the background uh, but xsdl is actually just a nested x server you're normally not running on something like this but i uh, use it when uh, for my software development to test on a real e-paper display and then um, Firefox Focus I also have it set, uh, set to run in the background but other apps like uh, for example Kobo, Kindle and Webtoon I currently don't have those um, running in the background because for for example for Webtoon uh, the only really the only real thing you will uh, give me when it's running in the background are notifications which i already have on my other tablet that also has webtoon on it and of course on my phone by disabled notifications on my phone for webtoon and then um other than that stuff for stuff like kobo and kindle it's only really for like if you want to like just push books to download on the device so not really a problem f uh, for me so i can just um leave those unchecked then um device settings you can actually set a password um so you can like enter a pin code when you wake it from sleep however based on my analysis it doesn't seem to really work you can't set this password through the aosp settings itself you can only do it through here so you can't use like some of the fancier ones like the android like little pattern with the grid of dots and you look you whatever so you can actually set the delay here i set it to immediate so now if i lock it and then uh, wait a few seconds two three four five it unlocks and then puts this up on screen when i initially tested this it didn't work but that's interesting that it would actually do that and it would actually have the pad like just right at the bottom instead of like putting it in the middle of the screen like the tablet version of android usually would so i usually just leave the pin code turned off um and then just uh password protect certain things like evernote next thing is language settings itself i believe this is identical to the aosp settings so you can change your settings here uh keyboard input methods this is just a this is just quick settings and i'd rather just do that in the USB settings. There's factory data resets as well. I'm not gonna tap that. Uh, apps, which I believe is yeah, it's right from the USB settings. Uh, software update. Um. Yeah, version one point zero point zero. Uh, from what I've seen in Goody Reader's review, it seems to be uh, the unit seems to be running like a slightly different build. Uh, compared to the one I have and then uh, developer options uh, normally this isn't here but because I enabled developer options in Android itself um, so that I can enable stuff like ADB Android debug, uh, Android debug bridge which is what the um, USB debugging feature connects to and the next thing is about device which just takes you to the page in AOSP settings uh, yeah Android 6.0.1, but as I mentioned, my theory is that they take a long time to modify the software. So I imagine they probably will be using 10, uh, probably the next version of Android they might use is probably Oreo before moving on to like just write 10.0 right away. Yeah, it seems to be fairly common for Android based e readers to stick on older software versions. Also, because Google like and AOSP they don't officially support Android e readers. So yeah, that is about it for um, customizing the, um, I mean, going through the built-in settings on here.